then you also have um, an area of special forces operations on the back of that hill. The antennas, those antennas, mm -hmm. on the back of those. And uh, you have ranges, have open range, you can shoot about one mile. But this side was uh, bombed with, you know, with cannons from there. That's why it was completely destroyed, this area. That area was bombed. Ready for this? Sure. Okay. Well, howdy. We got uh, Mr. Eduardo here, and I'm Rex. We're sitting here in? In Toledo. Good. And we have the infantry school from the Spanish Army just behind us. Yeah, it's pretty scenic. We got the tour of the uh, military museum. Pretty interesting. Spain's been all over the place for a long time. History uh, here is a lot older than it might be in the New World. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's always neat to see um, how everything fits together and where the culture comes from, you know, in the Western culture. And yep. so it was a, a humbling experience for sure. But uh, we're sitting here. Now, we had some good conversations uh, last night we're, uh, or, or the night before that around the dinner table. And we're talking about different things with long range shooting. And Eduardo's kind of one of the experts who knows what he's talking about. And, <laughs> and uh, he's a cool Sounds guy. Sounds weird. <laughs> Every so. time I hear about being an expert about nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we had a good conversation going about shooting dogma. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a, a good conversation because so many times uh, there's different schools of thought of exactly how to uh, carry out the fundamentals of marksmanship. Different guys will really latch onto different techniques. Different guys will have certain dogmas. They'll, they'll almost sometimes be so hardcore, they will want to establish like a religion on the topic. And uh, what what's your uh, perspective on that? Yet we had some great points I'd like to revamp on. Actually, actually I, I never, I've never been a dogmatic guy, anything in life. Because uh, one of the good things about getting older is that you have been through different phases in your life mm -hmm. in which somebody told you that the only way to do this was whatever. Mm -hmm. And then time passed and they found out that there was a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. So you felt like uh, cheated or retarded or whatever. <laughs> so in the end, I realized that there are many ways to skin a cat. Yeah. And uh, there are definite ways to do things wrong. Mm -hmm. But there may be better ways to do what we are doing right now Simply, if we get, become too dogmatic, yeah. we may miss the point and keep doing the same thing. As, as Einstein said, if, if you keep doing the same thing every time, you will get the same results. Absolutely. And I think it's important, we talked about too, maintaining flexibility in any system, just in an open mind to be corrected at any time is very important for uh, shooters of different styles. And I think that that transfers over to anything in life. Yep. I mean, you can put, you can, you can take the same approach to anything, mm -hmm. from shooting to parachuting to living your own life to studies to raising your kids, yep. uh, whatever, whatever you do in life. If you are too, too, uh, uh, too obsessed with doing the right thing the way you, somebody else told you to do it, and you don't open your your mind for improvements, for changing things, testing them to see if it works. So right. if it doesn't, if it works, keep on doing it. If it doesn't. 
just go back to the first. Yep, and it's interesting. It seems like there's certain scenarios that are more conducive where the techniques are more advantageous in certain particular scenarios maybe uh, on some things, but it's, they shouldn't be applied universally all the time because there's like infinite scenarios a guy can encounter. We're talking about how to properly uh, grip or to not grip the rifle. Some guys are very religious on one side. You absolutely can never grip it. And then other guys absolutely say, no, you have to have positive control on the rifle. You need to preload the bipod, all these things. Uh, I, I, as I told you, I don't believe in anything like that. I, I really believe that you have to train the way you shoot, either competition or combat. And if you only shoot bend wrist, then... Go ahead. I mean, the set of the the environmental possibilities, mm -hmm. the changes you can face are di very limited. But if you are in combat or something very active like PRS competition, things like that, mm -hmm. then you have to be very flexible. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, one thing I, I, I started doing many years ago, I, maybe 15 years ago when I started training uh, military snipers, uh, is not allowing them to set up their bipods because the position I was putting them into didn't allow it to. Okay. For example, if the place where they have to stand is uh, dangerous, if you stand too way to the back and impossible to put your bipod in front. So they went there, tried to put the bipod, and they realized that they couldn't. It's not going to work it's every not time. Work. <laughs> so they realized that they needed something else. Mm -hmm. So they said, uh oh, I didn't bring my rucksack. <laughs> they learned the lesson. Yep. So you have to be flexible. The bipod is fine. The rucksack is also fine. Uh, putting your rifle over a rock is not good. Right. So there are many ways to do it wrong, uh, and there are many ways to do it right also. <laughs> Understanding the fundamentals of the science and how things work in a rifle system, like internal ballistics, how things reverberate, can really help us to select the right things that will be the less problematic. But also sometimes, you know, there might be an ideal position, but you sacrifice other priorities to suit that one ideal. And so it's really a balancing act of prioritizing what you need to do in that instance. For example, if you were talking about if you're shooting straight down a mountain, you need you need to grip the rifle. You need to hold on to the rifle. I mean, if the rifle <laughs> if if the if the bipod slips a little bit, the rifle is going to go down. It goes bye bye. <laughs> and I've seen it happen actually. Yeah. So when did you, you have see to go it, for a little bit of a walk, or yeah. did you do this, or? Uh, no, I saw it happen. <laughs> Luckily, it was not under under my watch, so uh, I I was not blamed for that one. Right. But I when you see a Barrett going down a mountain, I see it actually it's happened twice, and it it's not funny. Did the Barrett survive? No. <laughs> I mean, the Barrett survived, but right. it needed some maintenance. It needed a little help. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Barretts are tough. Yes. But not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, the problem is if you have to adapt. We are always training uh, to adapt, 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 and overcome. Mm -hmm. But then we go back on our fundamentals mm -hmm. and become rigid. Yeah. Which is the opposite to adaptable. Right. So I don't understand why we train so hard to be uh, adaptable, mm -hmm. because that's the main goal right now. Make make a make a, an operator, a shooter, a, a human being, which is super flexible in the attitude, in the mindset, and then force him into a very rigid uh, fundamental system, which that's not flexible at all. No, at all. Maintaining flexibility in how we implement anything in this craft or anything else is uh, going to be very important. I mean, it's, it's going to be critical. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the good thing about it is that once you learn that, and once you realize that you need to be very flexible, then you start thinking, oh, wait a minute. The, the guys that do this successfully, the guys that win competitions, have uh, sniping records, uh, build the best rifles, uh, what do they do? And if you do your research, you will see that there's not a line at all. There's not a way of There's doing a diversity it. of opinions. There's, there's a whole new diversity of opinions of people that do it successfully. I don't mean to say that this is better than the other. No, it's right. different. But they both do it fine. I, I always remember, and I used it in my book because I think it's, it was very, very, uh, very, very obvious in the display of, of the reality. Um, the uh, Paladin Press did a did with my good friend uh, John Plaster, did a video called Ultimate Sniper. Mm -hmm. And it was lots of fun because they, they uh, got 
all the latest, it, that was about five years ago, they had all the sniper records uh, down there. They had the 50 cal record, the Gilligan, all of them. They have three or four of them. And uh, they had like a stage where they shoot all of them against the target at the same time, like, mm -hmm. a, like a go crazy minute, whatever. And uh, if you look at that capture, each of these guys were the three guys that have the three world records in sniping at the time. And each had a different position. Each of them. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, I use that picture every time telling, are you telling me that these guys are dumb? They don't know how to shoot? No way. Well, it's interesting because like any other uh, thing that falls to the, the procedure of the dogma, yeah. right? Um, people overdo the details sometimes because that's how they've arrived to the destination. But they don't realize that the terrain to get there is there's more ways around the barn. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, we can go back to the same point mm -hmm. as many times. There are thousands of different conditions that would preclude you to use uh, uh, this type of grip or the other type of grip or use this type of uh, bipod or the other type of bipod or use this kind of rifle or the other kind. So what's better? I don't know. For the condition, it depends. Yep. And I think that if we keep uh, just maybe it, keep it simple in yeah. terms of like, okay, this is what we're trying to achieve. The rifle needs to be steady. Yep. The crosshairs need to be exactly on the center of the target or wherever they need to be to hit yeah. the target. Where you want them to be. And then you want the rifle to go off without wiggling off the target. And that's the point. Yeah. In the end, <laughs> in the end, in the end, there's a few real fundamentals which have nothing to do with your position. Right. Have to do with your with the goals you have as a shooter. Right. There's different techniques that help achieve those That's fundamentals, so, but those techniques can be interchanged based on whatever you're doing. They say, go back to fundamentals. Fundamentals is not how I put my feet. Right. Fundamentals <laughs> having a steady position. Yes. Whatever yes. it is, whatever the conditions. Mm -hmm. If I'm shooting over a barn, hanging by a, a line on a carabiner, uh, my shooting position is not going to be the same right. than shooting <laughs> on a competition in a flat range. So that, that, that means that it's wrong. No, it's the adaptation or the most stable uh, situation. So the position I can find in that situation. Mm -hmm. And the same can be applied with how we organize data too. A lot of guys say, you know, you should be using this data organization system or this ballistic uh, system or this, you know, type of chart or that type of chart. But in reality, you have to suit it for the application and what works with your brain, right? Uh, as I told you, I, I consider myself more a tech guy than a combat guy. I'm too old to, to consider myself any kind close to combat. <laughs> so I, I'm developed a good t technique in developing the little tiny differences in, in equipment and ballistics and things that make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I saw that what works for you regarding tables and ballistics software doesn't work with another guy just because you have different ways of seeing things. Absolutely. People understand first focal plane mm -hmm. and uh, they maybe... Uh, see second focal plane as mm, better or first focal plane as better or there are kinds of different There's all different kinds of preferences. Minutes of angles. Yep. Uh, some people get confused with a mill, mill rep, yep. mill MOA. That, that's why, I mean, that's the reason why there are, mm, after many, many years, decades of having mill red and MOA turrets, yep. now they have MOA reticles too. Yes. That's, they only did that because people got it, got it wrong all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the only but reason yeah, to have that because it, MOA it's good if you only use yards. Right. Uh, once you go up to a different non-metrical thing. Now you have to it, understand more math in the field under stress. So basically, that's always fun. Do you think that if I make a table based in middle rats and, and metric systems and, and I give it to a guy that his mind works with fractions and inches, it won't work? Yeah, it's always important for us to remember that we want to conduct anything in a language we speak. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels. The, the idea between <laughs> language is communication. Yes. And the communication here is it, it goes from the target to the, to the rifle, to the bullet, to your tables, to you. Right. If something in between the communication is cut for whatever reason, yep. uh, it, won't, it won't work. Right. One thing we talk about, and I was going to ask you about this too, is um, really to, to get a field expedient shooter mm -hmm. who is viable on, on, in the field mm -hmm. with his stuff. Uh, there's more things going on than just equipment, obviously, right? Uh, you got to have sound equipment to get the job done, but also uh, we talk about the marksmanship. Actually, you don't, even, even without sound equipment, you can get the job done. Yes. <laughs> the, the important thing is having a good shooter. Yes, a good shooter. A, a good, reliable, independent thinking, yep. flexible 
shooter. Right. Which it, is that's self, what I was self, getting to. Self reliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, and uh, having a survival mindset. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at survival, not uh, that you have to make a fire with the flint, but thinking uh, that you have to be able to support yourself and take care of your stuff and uh, adapt to changing conditions mm -hmm. and be safe, operative, and uh, and being able to to do the mission, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, taking a target out or if it's uh, competing or hunting or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are reliant on technology too much you live as long as the batteries live so you're telling me that you so you're only a, a sniper as long as the batteries are alive that's, that's what i just told you yep. it's it's something that i cannot really think that i will only be a sniper and uh, as long as my batteries on my ballistic computer holds yeah. and i don't want anybody i train to be there in that position because it sucks <laughs> so basically what you have to do is you have to take profit of the huge amount of capabilities we have with the new technologies mm -hmm. because that is why we are shooting that far mm -hmm. we are not better shooters than we were 20 years ago mm -hmm. we are we have more technology support we're better at organizing data now no I'm, I'm not organizing taking care of the data and having a far solution based on that information sure and it's happened for the last few years not yep. even 10 yep so if we get profit from that, we have to get that information and convert it into a system that is reliable in time. Right. Which batteries in, is not. Right. I got you. Yep. So you may, if you know your errors and you know how much you can afford, you can, you know how much you can afford to lose. Right. If I'm able to shoot a half a minute. But you I, have to have a general concept of, of the relationships of what's affecting what, of rather course. than just punching it in and a computer tells you, know, you one number. Since, it's kind of weird that since GPSs mm -hmm. started in the, in the mountain, outdoors, field, more people are getting lost than ever. <laughs> you know why? Because they don't <clears throat> know where they are. Because they're not paying attention to where they're That's going. That's it. They just follow the order. Turn yeah. right, turn left. They're staring at a screen the whole and time. you don't know where you are. You just follow the turn right and turn left. Yeah. I don't want the snipers to be like that. Right. Yeah, and that's very true, too. Yep. Is, uh, you know, putting inputs, especially on a digital system, you're, you're looking at one input at a time, and you're going through these pages, and you're not paying attention to the peripheral surroundings. You're not thinking in terms of, like, how do these different things individually affect everything? Yep. And then, so you're, it's a, it's a dilemma for sure. It's the same thing as high power scopes. Yes, I I I was uh, I was raised, as I say, when I was uh, a young shooter mm -hmm. with ten power fixed scopes. Yep, yep. And we did everything with that. <laughs> so now you say, how can I shoot a moving target fifty yards with a ten power? Okay, you you try to find how. Right. And you were we were not good at it. Sure. But we found a way to do it. Yep. We couldn't see the target perfectly at one mile, but we did, we didn't shoot that far either. Right. So <laughs> it was it was like. We have new equipment, and that new equipment gives us new capabilities. Right. But some of that equipment is dependent on technology, I mean energy, with it, which is batteries, or ruggedness, gotcha. which it can fail on you. Yep. What it will never fail on me is my mind. I mean, if my mind fails, I'm done. So I would rather use technology to improve my capability without the need of energy. So if I have my system working, I can do a certain amount of things, but mm -hmm. I can still get the job done if the technology fails, right. which means not waiting until the last moment to extract the information from the system and get a basic procedure that you start right. every day with your tables done. So if something fails, I can still work. How many different modes of backup do you like to have when it comes to ballistic data? Do you, do you typically like to have one in the rifle, one in your head, one in tables, uh, and then an electrical backup? Or oh, Normally, I only have, really, in, in reality, I only, I only have two and my mind, okay. my, my experience. Which ones are those, uh, the other two? The computer, which I use, okay. which is normally, normally is a, is a mil-spec uh, calculator. Okay. Uh, I mean, calculator, a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, it's a, it's a, it's a software-based uh, portable ballistic computer. Okay. It's changing so much over time yeah. that what I say now, in three months, it may be different. It'll be obsolete. <laughs> it's kind of weird <laughs> yep. because we had PDAs that cost a fortune in the last six hours. Now right. we have smartphones yeah. that are waterproof yep. and last for a week if you take the GPS out. Yep. So it depends. But basically a system operated by batteries, okay. 
But then I have uh, my own table set, which is remade every day when I get out. Sure. And uh, and then my mind. If something goes wrong, I still know my. You're my still dope. intimate with all the science. Yeah. Yep. Especially when you operate with only one rifle. One yep. of the problems, as I told you, one of the problems I have is I have to work with many different rifles, and I hate it. Yeah, because it's hard to keep them straight. Not, of course. Sometimes I don't even know how I left them. Right. So I, need, I started using, like in the shop, when you buy a new rifle, you have a tag. Yep. And it's, I have all the things written in the tag, because after three months, I don't know if that rifle was zeroed or not. Right. So if I need to grab a rifle, go out, I don't know. If it was zeroed, had a problem, yeah. if it, I dis- disassembled the scope for whatever reason and I never get it back together, right. I don't know. I forget about <laughs> it. I tend to forget things. Beware so, the man with one gun, yeah. except so, for guys who are in the R&D business like you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, you, or in the review business, you're playing with so much equipment, you forget what's going on. But In the end, it's, it's also a problematic thing to do. Mm-hmm. So if I was lucky enough, <laughs> it's a way of saying it, uh, to only have one rifle, uh, that rifle should be an extension of you, and you, you should know your dope. Yes. Without, without the table. Right. You, yep. don't, you don't really need the table. Right. So if I only use one rifle, and I, I, that, that rifle had the same scope ever, mm-hmm. it, it would have also some sort of ballistic turret, which we know that it doesn't work, but it can help when I get into trouble, uh, help me out, because okay. I, I know how to keep the zero of that. Because... Uh, I, I didn't. We didn't talk about this, but normally I don't. I don't shoot with uh, the typical zeros you have now. Mm-hmm. I shoot with a long range zero. Oh, do you? Yeah. So. And that's with the fifty calibers. No, with or everything. just with everything. Everything. I don't. I don't like hundred yard zeros. I, I go to five hundred at least. So then I can use the dots. That's the way I uh, use like a reverse image zero at closer ranges. Yeah. Then. Yep. Yeah. I use it. I just I basically I I just select, I just refine my zero, for that five hundred shot, and then everything falls in. At shorter distance, it's okay. angles. So it's, it makes your life easier because it's very difficult to calculate the differences in zeros when the change is less than one click, which is every day. Right. So if you shoot today, you shoot tomorrow, the difference may be 0.02 clicks. <laughs> How do you calculate that on yeah. a rifle that shoots three quarters of a minute? Exactly. It's impossible. <laughs> when you go to 500, then you see a click or two. Right. Yep. You can take that into account. So yes. if you learn from that experience, you can take it back to the, to the 100 and your, your errors go really minute. And that's, that's the game. Mm-hmm. So if I had to shoot 100 all day long because like a SWAT guy, it, that's a different game. But if, if you have to be flexible, then I would rather have a 0 out of 100 and can still go to 100 with a very tiny error. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, another thing I was going to talk to you about is... Um, there's a lot of guys who talk about competitive applications versus military applications, right? Yeah. And you're very well versed in both worlds. They're different. Yep, they are different. Absolutely different. Yep. Can you compare and contrast those for folks who uh, might not believe other people when they talk about it? I mean, it's it, for me, it's very <laughs> simple. It's uh, everything in life is is you have a mission, you have a goal, and you find the best equipment to do it. Uh, when the goals are different, when the missions are different, the equipment will be different. It's mm-hmm. as simple as that. Mm-hmm. If you need to shoot a target, and uh, like in competition, and you only need to hit it, you don't need to transmit energy. You don't need to put it down. You don't need to per- to penetrate a plate or a hard armor, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. You don't need energy. Right. You don't need recoil. Just need to hit the target enough to see that you hit it. That's it. So basically, uh, you go down in energy uh, because you don't need it. Right. You need ballistics. Yep. You need a laser uh, guided little tiny yep. Ter- bullet yep. that doesn't kill nothing, but external ballistics becomes superior yep. to terminal ballistics. That's it. Yep. But if you have a mission, a hunter, a sniper, then you need to put energy on a target, and then that, those little tiny guns don't work. <laughs> and then sometimes your technique might change too with of how course. you apply your fundamentals. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, the equipment is just a part of the equation. The technique is absolutely different. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, in life, in hunting. If you shoot close, most of the times it's moving targets. Mm-hmm. And if you shoot far, you have to make them stop. Because shooting moving targets at more than 500 meters is kind of tricky. <laughs> you have them. to be psychic and know exactly where it's going to go. I mean, you have to, uh, I, I, I don't have the force. I'm not how you die. So <laughs> I cannot make that, that, that buck stop. Right. And uh, keep maintaining direction and speed. Right. So most of the times you're 
really on the edge of not hitting it if you yes. shoot very far. Or like when you're shooting at those extreme distances like the uh, the kill that was on the news a few weeks ago or a few months ago with yeah. the two miles. You have to you have to know for sure that the guy's not going to go get a cup of coffee or I something. Mean that, <laughs> I mean, it takes seven seconds to go there. Yeah, exactly. So actually, when we shoot that far... You get the second round, and you're ready, waiting for the bullet to impact. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at the target, looking for you the bullet. You have plenty of time to get back plenty behind the scope. Back. Plenty of time. So, actually, that's very good for feedback, <laughs> but it's not so good for other things, <laughs> like uh, repeated shots and the wind. And yep. You have to get your protocols together, because the wind at that distance will kill you. If you just stop to discuss with your spotter, if it's up and down or whatever, you're going to start from scratch again. Sure. And if a guy was going to draw like a Venn diagram of uh, com competitive shooting, let's say like PRS style shooting and, you know, military applications, where do they kind of overlap and where are they totally, totally different? I mean, they overlap in the dynamics. Yep. Uh, I wouldn't say that shooting like F-Class uh, is really dynamic at all. <laughs> I mean, targets are there still. They don't need to know ballistics. They, when they shoot down, they tell, shooter 34, it's on the ground, low on the ground, and you just pull it up. You don't need ballistics. And you can win any world championship without knowing anything about ballistics. You only need to how to correct the wind. Some people don't even know that because they have a wind coach. So shooting it becomes uh, uh, more the fundamentals of releasing a perfect shot every time and uh, see so like any other sport it zooms in on a specific area that's and right. really helps you to refine that dynamics is absolutely different right so in the middle you have to operate between getting what is good from this getting what is good for that and uh, and getting the experience i mean competitive shooters are way better in what they do than any professional shooter that has to do many other things it can be, a, I mean, it's impossible that mm -hmm. somebody that spends all his time and effort uh, shooting at 1,000 yards from a certain position, 1,000 yards to a target, n no sniper will shoot better than him. It's simple. Right. And every time snipers go to an F-class competition, they get their ass chewed. Because <laughs> it's a different It's different a different thing. game. It's yep. a different game. If you change the distances to the target from the F-class, they won't hit it. And the sniper will still hit it. Right. So in the end, it's a matter of getting what is good from this position, mm -hmm. on this condition, this type of competition, and extract the information which is good about ballistics, yep. internal ballistics, reloading, uh, quality control of, the, of how they reload, how they get the scope set up. Absolutely. The best biputs. The best. Yep. I mean, those things, you can learn a lot from yep. these guys that shoot F-class or bench rest. That's kind of their forte. With, yeah, without having to do it yourself for 20 years to learn it because they are open. Everybody's very open yep. in teaching other, others what they learn the hard way. I mean, right. In reality, shooters, most of the time, they are very open. So if you want to, uh, you want to shoot very good from a, from a very stable position and a known distance, go there and learn. You spend a, a year or two shooting of class and you will realize that how good you could shoot at F class and how bad you were when you thought that you hit every target you shot at <laughs> as a sniper. Because the, the targets are absolutely different. Right. They are huge when you shoot a human target uh, yeah. or a, an animal at a thousand yards. And they're yards. wily and they're sneaky and they're moving and they do things of you're course, not expecting. Of course, it's absolutely different because yeah. uh, targets that move, that have different position and known distances, have a whole new set of parameters that competitive shooters don't face. Right. So if you learn... If the competitive shooter spend a, lot, a little time like uh, play, doing the PRS matches, then mm -hmm. he will be a better shooter too mm -hmm. because you have to learn from everything. I would love to do PRS matches. Sure. Yes, I, I can't because I'm, I'm, I'm too, I have too much work and too much to do with my 1,000-yard, 2-mile thing. Yep. But I would love to because I think it's a very good way of, of making yourself flexible in your mindset, mm -hmm. moving and uh, even even though I'm I'm a little old to get on that that game, I would I would have a, a good reason to get fit again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>